too much glucose can bind to proteins and muck up the machinery of the cells in a harmful inflammatory process called glycation. It's kind of like pouring pancake syrup into a car engine. The problem here is that if your energy levels start to wane, you can't tap the energy out of your stored body fat because the hormone that does that, hormone sensitive lipase, is sensitive to insulin. Insulin will not allow you to tap body fat for energy. If you have a bunch of insulin sitting in your blood from processing a bunch of glucose before and you need energy, you're going to get ravenously hungry and will need to jack your blood sugar up short term with a snack or something to raise your energy levels again. This is why if you're following the recommended American diet, you're usually going to be stuck in this loop of wanting to eat every time your blood glucose drops and three meals a day will feel very necessary. Even medical doctor Peter Atia fell victim to this. Uh, despite exercising three or four hours every single day and following the food pyramid to the letter, I gained a lot of weight and developed something called metabolic syndrome. Ketosis to the rescue. If you stop eating glucose for about 10 to 12 hours, your glucose stores will deplete and your body will start breaking down fat so that the liver can produce something called ketone bodies. Ketone bodies produce energy for your cells through similar pathways as glucose, but are much more stable, efficient, and don't cause complications like we just talked about. You may have heard of this ketosis state referred to as starvation mode in school, but this by no means suggests that you are about to starve. I particularly dislike this term because it suggests that glucose, carbohydrates, is our body's primary fuel source, when in fact it is possible to live entirely without carbohydrates. Humans have absolutely no requirement for carbohydrate, not one gram do we require. We have this fabulous liver that produces as much glucose as you require. 